Mania feels so fun, but it causes progressive brain damage. It's like eating your brain. I miss being manic. So it's really, really sad looking back on the past few years of my life, not remembering really beautiful moments I've had with my best friends and my family. Bipolar is a terminal illness that you can die from. So several people requested I make this video what to do if you really crave and miss being in a manic episode how to cope with it. I made a video very similar to this about a year ago called Addicted to Mania. I'm gonna link that up here and below. And soon after that video, I completely went off all of my meds, which is one of the first things I want to address. Could I try to hold these secrets inside me? My mind's like a deadly disease. Craving being manic is very normal, but also really dangerous. And so if you keep ruminating on this, analyzing and analyzing within this mindset of wanting to be manic, you are likely to impulsively go off your meds, ghost your psychiatrist and your therapist, and just spiral down into a really dark place. So beware. chemistry when you're in a manic episode, it is like a drug. So once you drop down from that manic state, there's this sudden drug depletion. It's natural to feel a withdrawal and to experience this addictive type mindset where you want that extra dopamine and serotonin back. I've said this in breakup advice videos too, where I'm warning about impulsively going back to your ex if it is an unhealthy relationship, that this experience of a drug depletion may tempt you to act impulsively rather than thinking of it logically. I've read research comparing mania to heroin in that there's this excessive dopamine serotonin, obviously, to a lot lesser extent. But the point is, mania often manifests as pure pleasure. So a chill form of heroin. Yes, of course you want that feeling again. You want life to feel amazing, perfect, like you're in a fairy tale. I've lived through years at a time where everything has been like through this lens of multicolored and diamonds. Everything just is amazing. But I've also learned through the years, living years in depression, that Feeling and emotion is not all that there is. If the part of mania that you miss is just that emotion and depth of feeling, why do you want to be a hedonist? At first, it will seem like this shock, like this loss of identity almost. But if you're patient, eventually your brain will adjust and you'll get used to life as a normal person who's not on manic drugs and you'll become happy and content and joyful. I think that with bipolar, even when you are medicated, you will still feel stronger than everyone else. I'm on three medicines right now. I am stabilized in my bipolar. But over the weekends, I cried four or five different times because I felt so happy and it was so much emotion and joy joy and gratitude and I just had to cry to get the emotion out. So I'm bipolar and on medicine I still feel so strongly and have passion, intensity, creativity. It doesn't just go away once you go on medicine. Yes, it's different than that complete <laughs> manic feeling, but you'll become back to normal and even your normal will still be so intense, amazing, everything will feel perfect sometimes. It's not something you're completely leaving behind, I promise. Life is still more intense and passionate when you're bipolar. Some people who miss mania and are complaining about feeling numbs, feeling less emotion, may actually be over medicated. If you feel not normal, not yourself, you may need to change the dosage of your meds. And I think sometimes we're not fully listened to because people just think, oh, you're craving the mania, you want this out of reality, emotional feeling. But sometimes you really do need to change your medicine. If you feel miserable and numbed and like you don't have any emotional spectrum, you don't feel passionate or creative, something's wrong, change your meds. There are several dozen different mood stables 
stabilizers, antipsychotics, and antidepressants that are used to treat bipolar. And then within those medicines, you can combine several together, you can have different dosages. So there are so many options that can be used to treat your brain. Psychiatry is like an art form, and so there's not one way to treat bipolar. Being medicated is kind of a game of trial and error, and so if you feel uncomfortable with the dosage you're on, you need to tell your psychiatrist and change your medicine. Your medicine needs to become individualized to your brain and the only way that can happen is if you speak up and tell your psychiatrist what you like, what you don't like. Some of the psychiatrists I've seen are okay with me being hypomanic sometimes. They understand that as long as I am on medicine, as long as I'm sleeping enough, they don't have any problem or worry, they don't see it as dangerous if I'm hypomanic some of the time. Recently when I've gone on new antipsychotics and I say, oh, I start to feel no emotion in my relationship with God, I start to feel distant from other people, I don't feel happy as much anymore. When I report that feeling, then they reduce the dosage I'm on and then I feel normal again. Real quick, so this footage ended up being super long because I had so much to say. So if you care a lot about different medications and you want to hear in depth on different meds, all my views on them, which ones to go on if you want to feel hypomanic, which ones completely cut out mania, all of that. There's a whole other 10 minutes of this video just on meds. That's gonna be linked in the cards and in the description. really great treatment options. So there's this online therapy website where they have licensed therapists who you can Skype with essentially. You can do therapy from your home. You can get diagnosed with bipolar online. Obviously you have to pay for it, but they accept insurance. So it'll just be a $20, $30 copay. But there's a one week free trial with the link that I have below. They really just want people to get treatment and get diagnosed. So go to the link below, do a therapy session or several from your house for free or continue doing it every week, whichever. If you've been watching my videos and think you're bipolar but have not talked to a professional yet, you really, really need to and this BetterHelp online website is a really great option, especially since if you're in depression, it's a lot of times super hard to get out of bed, get out of the house, make appointments. You don't even have to get out of bed to do therapy. occurs because of bipolar mood episodes. If you're in a really long depression episode, really intense manic episode, it causes brain damage. Sometimes it can be reversed, sometimes it can't. Sometimes it will take a year, year and a half, two years after this really intense episode for your brain to fully recover. This should scare you, I hope it scares you. Mania feels so fun, but it causes progressive brain damage. It's like eating your brain. It's exactly like if you were abusing drugs. And I know it feels unfair because this was injected into you against your will. It's a personalized drug. It feels like a part of you, but it's hurting your brain. And everyone watching this video, you have so much to give to the world and to give to everyone in your life and to pour into your careers and any creative outlets you have. And so do not harm your potential by going manic all the time. And again, I know for me, mania pours into my YouTube channel and into my writing. It makes me more successful, more creative. But again, be on some sort of medicine to somehow limit that and make it not as damaging. Just know if you let yourself go off meds, go manic, go into depression, you're harming yourself. Especially the sleep deprivation. In depression, the sleep deprivation, even when you're sleeping for 15 hours, you're still sleep deprived because of the way your brain messes up your sleep cycle. Mania is overworking your brain. It's shortening your life and decreasing your intellect. It's not worth it. I didn't realize this until I had the worst manic episode I've ever had, which was about a year and a half ago. And after it happened, this entire day, I just couldn't remember. I only could remember what I'd written down, kind of constructed memories of the event, but it was blank. And I started thinking back and I realized that I had memory loss of entire portions of times that I had been manic or been in depression. And I remember at the time, my therapist asking me, do you want to remember your life? It's such a scary thing because I remember just saying how fun and amazing being manic had been even though I didn't remember it. I had a similar experience most of last year where I was off meds and it was amazing. I was so creative and productive, but 
It felt like I was only living in the present, that my brain was not recording memories. Just basic brain lapses where something would happen the day before, a few minutes before, and I would forget. It's really difficult to maintain relationships and just be normal if you're in a state where you're constantly forgetting what's happened. And I think for me, it's really, really sad looking back on the past few years of my life and not remembering really beautiful moments I've had with my best friends and my family. I just forget experiences I've had with people. And if you're in this out of reality type manic state and not medicated, you're not gonna remember your life. Again, it's not worth it being manic all the time. Yes, it's that rush of dopamine. It's this feeling of completely alive, being in heaven, it's amazing. But then you're out of touch with the people around you and with your own identity and reality. It's so much better to be on some sort of medicine and to feel more normal. And I know that right now, mania might be your normal, but I promise that after months have gone by, things will change and you'll begin to feel normal being less intense all the time. One in four people with bipolar do end up killing themselves. So many other people attempt suicide. Letting yourself go super, super manic is extremely likely to immediately crash down into this severe depressive state. In bipolar, the depression isn't this chill, numbed state of being. It wants to kill you. And so take this seriously. Be scared of depression. Be scared of mania. If you were diagnosed with cancer, would you just opt out of chemo because it became uncomfortable? Or because you felt exhausted, less energy doing the chemo treatment? No! You would fight so hard. You would do whatever it takes to survive and you would trust your doctor. So treat this the same way. Bipolar is a terminal illness that you can die from. If you would only comply with treatment, it's so much less of a big deal and you'll forget your bipolar and you'll feel normal and feel like yourself and have this beautiful spectrum of emotion, live a flourishing life, have healthy relationships, but you have to comply with treatment. You have to stay medicated. Whenever I think of my experience in extreme depression, I start sobbing because it was so horrible. And so I know you probably have memory loss from when you were in depression. But anytime you're thinking of just going off meds, wanting to be a huge level of manic, remember how horrible your depression is. And remember that bipolar disorder is going up and down. Unless you're on medicine, there's nothing blocking your brain from crashing into that horrible state. And I, I hate depression and I don't want any of you to have to live through that. It's horrible reading so many comments and messages constantly as part of my YouTube. How many people have to suffer with this? And so if you have bipolar, please, please do not do that to yourself. You wouldn't let one of your friends take this drug that would make them crash into severe depression. So why are you not loving yourself in the same way? Major depression episodes can last from nine to 10 months. And a lot of times it takes so long to find a medicine that works for you that lifts the depression. Any extreme productivity and creativity brought on by the mania will be canceled out by the months of time where you're locked down and numbed out in depression. Like I talked about, there's certain medicines like Lamictal that will let you be super manic, but prevent you from crashing into depression. So again, be on some sort of medicine. Maybe your mania will not crash down into depression. For me, Lamictal is like a block preventing me from crashing into depression. But that's the whole point of this video. I hope you got out of this video, be on medicine. <laughs> but most of the time, even when I'm on medicine, if I go really manic, I'll have a few days where I'm in depression. And if I'm on no medicine and really manic, I'll crash into severe depression. I have almost killed myself driving so recklessly in mania. I've never made a whole video telling this story, but I wasn't medicated and I was like just a second away from being car going 40 miles an hour, just crashing right into the driver's seat where I was. I've been in really sketchy situations with guys I don't know very well, walking around at night by myself, just like really unsafe, scary situations that have really, really scared my parents and my friends as well. I have thoughts when I'm off meds, when I'm more manic, of running into traffic, of running on the train tracks, of jumping off of things, voices telling me to kill myself.
this is my favorite one because America is so individualistic and once you think of it from a communal community perspective the best decision obviously is to be on meds one example and the reason I've been able to stay stabilized for the past five months is because I'm in a relationship I went on more medicine I actually went on antipsychotics to make me less manic because I'm with my boyfriend and it was so fun and amazing feeling outside of reality but because I was so emotionally close to him it constantly felt like I forgot who he was and I was having to get to know a new person because I was manic and outside of reality comment below if that makes sense at all if you've had a relationship where you feel like you're racing and they're walking and so I need to slow down and walk with him. If I'm manic, the relationship just cannot work. Also, when it comes to relationships, if I go into a slight depression, I feel emotional detachment and will want to break up with him. If I went super manic, I might become so hypersexual and go cheat on him. I would ruin our relationship, really hurt him if I wasn't super medicated. It's a little bit different with best friends and family, but I've had plenty of experiences when I've been less medicated where I've really hurt and scared people close to me. It is objectively selfish of me and of anyone to prioritize this rush of emotion and feeling of dopamine and serotonin in mania above being balanced for everyone in your life. And here are just some examples I wrote down of how I hurt relationships when I'm not super balanced on meds. Ghosting people who you made plans with. Accidentally dating someone while manic who you're not even attracted to. <laughs> Breaking up with someone impulsively. Yelling and getting super angry or just extreme malice lashing out at people. I personally don't yell at people, but I do say really hurtful things. When I'm more manic, I know exactly what to say to hurt someone. When you have zero filter and anything you're thinking comes out of your mouth, you're going to hurt people. And just ask yourself, do you really want to be a hurtful person? Yes, when you're manic, you become extremely extremely affirming of people in your life, but it also has an ugly side. When I was in college, as my bipolar was fully developing, I went through a couple years where I was really hypomanic and it permanently changed me. I've listened to actors and actresses talk about when they played a role on a TV show for years and how that person wasn't even real but it permanently changed them, it was a part of them. And I feel similar with being manic for a portion of time. That became you, it became your identity. And just because you're saying goodbye to that person, to that state of being, it doesn't mean that didn't affect you and impact you and even inspire you. When I'm really, really manic, I don't care what people think about me. I'm just this pure version of myself and I'm more brave. And when I like someone, I tell them. When I want something, I fight for it. When I love someone, it's with all of me. Randomly dancing around, impulsively writing poetry, being so excited and passionate about what I'm reading, what I'm studying, getting immersed in writing, or video editing, being in a room and not even realizing the sun went down and then the room's pitch black, forgetting to eat because I'm so immersed in what I'm doing, that type of extreme focus and happiness and joy that comes from being manic, that's still a part of me and I think it's pushed me to be more brave, more creative, more impulsive in a really, really good way. Nikki and Gabby is a YouTube channel that I watch and on Nikki's vlog channel, she made a music video to this Halsey song and at the very end of the music video it shows her walking with her former self, this self who she's saying goodbye to, who she doesn't want to be anymore. And when I saw that I immediately thought of myself in bipolar and why did this happen to us? Sometimes you have to walk away and leave behind your manic self and it hurts and it's horrible and of course you'll cry and you'll feel this identity shift but Sometimes you have to say goodbye. And again, that doesn't mean she didn't change you, that she wasn't a part of you, that she isn't you in some capacity. But my manic self is so inspiring to me because what she thinks and feels, she's not scared of just being so raw and just putting her emotions out there and how she feels about people. Showing love and being affirming in this extreme effusive way. I'm literally about to tear up right now because I miss being manic still. But again, this goes back to the community aspect where it's easier for everyone around me when I'm not like that. 
In my Bible study a couple months ago, the deacon from my church was in my small group and he said that real spiritual growth happens when you have no emotion in your relationship with God, but you're choosing to worship him, choosing to live for him, even though you don't feel that connection. And I think that can apply to every area of our lives. And I don't even know how to articulate into words but maybe everyone can understand because all of you who are watching who are bipolar have had depression episodes as well. The first time I was in a depression episode, at the time I didn't even realize it was depression. But I realized that I was experiencing happiness and contentment and joy and sadness even though I was numb. I had this emotional experience. I was just objectively unhappy right now, objectively ungrateful, objectively all these things even though there was no emotion. And so because I've had that experience, I understand that I don't need extreme emotion to guide me. I don't need to feel in love. I don't need to feel passionate to do my life. I think of things in terms of moral obligations and commitments. In some ways, it's morally immature to demand this extreme emotion guiding you, leading you towards everything in your life. You can maintain relationships with people and do your work and be passionate about things through action. It doesn't all have to come through emotion. I have a lot of conversations with myself. I have very passionate inner dialogues. I have arguments within my own head a lot. And so anytime I want to go off meds, I listen to it and I validate my emotions and I listen to the arguments. But ultimately, if I don't have a logical reason for wanting to go off meds, for wanting to be manic, it's not okay. Like I said at the very beginning, it's a drug depletion and it's a craving and an addiction, but it's not a logical thing. I remind myself of all the times in the past when I've gone off meds and have completely crashed into depression, abused alcohol, lashed out at people who I love, like I was just explaining, have memory loss, have done dangerous things that could have killed me. I've started doing this thing where I think about the future. So I think about how any decision, but particularly going off meds, how that will affect me in a week, in two weeks, in a month, in a year. And so I think about all the past times when I've been off meds. Yes, there may have been some positives, but there are also negatives, like feeling out of reality, not recording memory, crashing into severe depression. I know how I will feel off meds and I don't like how I feel off meds. Yes, there's this drug high, but the rest of it, it, it isn't good. Remind yourself of the progressive brain damage you well give yourself. And like I said, I had a debate tournament. I had a discussion within myself. I listened to both sides and all the time, I conclude that being on meds is the best decision for someone who's bipolar. And something to look out for is self-deception. Because again, you're an addict. You're wanting to go off meds. I went off meds earlier in the year, I made like a 25 minute video explaining why it was such a good idea at the time. And I don't have memory from the times when I was off meds. You guys can go watch it. I'm gonna link it below and up here why I went off meds. But it honestly just made my life so much harder because I had to work out every day, get exactly nine hours of sleep. Anything sort of emotionally chaotic set off an episode. I was living by myself and not interacting with people that much. I wasn't in a relationship. I didn't have a ton of friends. I didn't have a normal job. But if I wanted to do anything normal, like be in love, have deep relationships with people where sometimes things can go wrong, wake up at a normal time in the morning, be able to drive safely. If you want anything normal in your life, you're gonna have to be on meds. I love you guys so much. Much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! So why can't you show me? Why can't you show me? I can see you looking for distractions. I can see you tired of the